Hey guys, Michael from Comp Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be talking about how to determine if a redox reaction is spontaneous or not. And to, to do so, you just need to look at the cell potential or the E cell. And if the E cell is positive, then it'll be spontaneous. And if it's negative, it'll be non spontaneous. So, spontaneous just means that the reaction will happen without outside help, it will happen naturally. So let's take a look at how to determine if these reactions are spontaneous or not. The first thing we have to do is determine the cell potential. And there's two techniques. I'll show you one technique for the first reaction and then another, the second technique for the second reaction. Let's start with the first reaction. The first technique for calculating the E cell is just to split the reaction into two half reactions. So we're going to split the reaction by putting the Zn's in one reaction and then the Cu's in the other reaction. Then we're going to balance the, uh, the reaction by adding electrons. So there's zero charge on this side, positive two charge on this side. So add two electrons over here, uh, positive two charge on this side, and no charge on this side. So add two electrons over here. So now both sides have the same charge. Now it's zero on both sides here, zero on both sides here. Then we take a look at the voltage for each of these half reactions. So this one would be an oxidation reaction because the electrons are being lost, electrons are on the product side. And then this one is a reduction reaction because the electrons are on the left hand side, which means electrons are being gained. Then we look at the, the cell potential. So Zn is, where is Zn? Zn's over here, but these are reduction half reactions. So Zn here is oxidation. That means we need to flip the voltage because when you flip the reaction, the voltage is flipped. Uh, when you flip the reaction, a reduction reaction becomes an oxidation reaction. So then this will become 0 0.76 volts now because we flipped the sign. And then the next one is this reaction right here. And this is a reduction reaction. That's a reduction reaction. So we can just keep its voltage of 0.34. Then we add the two, re the two voltage together and we get the total voltage of 1.110 volts. And since this voltage is positive, it, will me it means this reaction is spontaneous. It's going to happen without outside help. Then the next one. So the second technique is to use the equation E cell equals E cathode minus E anode. And cathode is where the reduction occurs, anode is where oxidation occurs, so we can just write E of reduction minus E of oxidation. And we can determine what's oxidized and what's reduced by using oxidation numbers. So NN, Na here is going to be positive 1 because it's charged. Cl is negative 1. Na here is 0. And then Cl here is 0. So based on the change in oxidation numbers, we can see that the uh, reduced element is going to be the Na because it went from positive 1 to 0. So it's oxidation numbers where it was reduced. And then the oxidized element was was Cl because it went from negative one to zero, so there was an increase in oxidation number. Then we take a look at the uh, the cell potential. Uh, for this one, we don't flip any of the signs; we just keep the potential as is. So let's take a look at the potential of Na. Na is down here, negative negative two point seven one four, and then the cell potential for Co is up here, and it's one point three six. Then we do reduction minus oxidation. So reduction was negative 2.714 minus oxidation was 1.36. And that gives us a potential of four, negative 4.074 uh, volts. And since this cell potential is negative, it means this reaction is going to be not spontaneous or non-spontaneous. So this this reaction is not going to happen naturally. We're going to have to add some energy source to make this reaction happen. And that's how you do it. That's how you would determine whether a reaction is spontaneous or not. Just look at the cell the cell potential. If it's positive, it's spontaneous, and if it's negative, it is not spontaneous. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.